Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Did you know that our CDH Webcam League now runs monthly? That's right. Every month we run the league so our players can compete for cash prizes. All you have to do is sign up for our Patreon at any tier. So hop in and compete in the league. Our custom sleeves are on sale. Right now through the end of the month, get 10% off of our sleeves. Use the link in the description below or go to our site and enter the code CRUXSUCKS and get 10% off of your purchase. We also have other merchandise available. Visit our link and pick up a t-shirt. Your purchase helps support the channel. We went to Command Fest Indy over the summer to record some games. We love going to conventions and recording, so stay tuned to our social media to find out the next event we will be attending. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Zack piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic Sopus. This deck, called Blue Farm, is Zack's favorite deck. It is a mid-range ad nauseum list that looks to draw early through its commanders. It converts this advantage into a resolved ad nauseum or peer into the abyss. It wins through traditional Underworld Breach or Thassa's Oracle lines. Zack's opening hand contains an Esper Sentinel, Phantasmal Image, Force of Negation, Polluted Delta, Watery Grave, Toxic Deluge, and Alliance Eye Diamond. Next, we have Dan, piloting the partner pair of Jessica Thrice Reborn and Ishai Ujitai Dragon Speaker. This is a big bird deck. It aims to land its commander Ishai early, profit off of its opponent's greed, and then punch face for triple damage with Jessica. Dan's opening hand contains an Ancient Tomb, Exotic Orchard, Soul Ring, City of Brass, Swords to Plowshares, Grim Monolith, and his London Mulligan is a Marsh Flats. After that, we have Nate, piloting Yuriko the Tiger Shadow. This is a Doomsday list with backup win cons in Thassa's Oracle or just classic Yuriko combat damage and flips. Nate's opening hand contains a Deadly Rollick, Clearwater Pathway, Sakashima Student, Mana Crypt, Shizo Death Storehouse, Fairy Seer, and his London Mulligan is a Ninja of the Deep Hours. Finally, we have Paul, piloting the partner pair of Tevish Sot, Doom of Fools, and Krom, Ludovic Opus. This is a mid-range farm list working in a similar way to Blue Farm, but with Tevish as a strong value piece instead of Temna. It aims to resolve Ad Nauz or Peer into the Abyss and then win with Underworld Breach or Thassa's Oracle. Paul's opening hand contains a Mystic Reflection, Wheel of Fortune, a Braid, Soul Ring, Mana Vault, Jeweled Lotus, and an Arid Mesa. Without further ado, let's begin this objectively official one-sided onslaught of oppression. Zack was declared the smartest guy in the room and gets to start us off. Zack draws a card per turn and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts an Esper Sentinel. He ships the turn. Dan draws a card for turn and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Soul Ring. Esper Sentinel triggers and Zack draws. He follows it up with a Talisman of Progress. He casts Grim Monolith. With three rocks and his mana all set up, he passes. Nate draws and plays a Clearwater Pathway. He casts Fairy Seer, scrying two as it enters. He gives the turn to Paul. Paul draws and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. Esper Sentinel triggers and Zack draws. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Vault. He cracks his Jeweled Lotus to help cast his commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two Thralls. He pays two and foretells a card face down from his hand into exile. Paul passes. Zack draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish with Esper Sentinel. Paul blocks with a Thrall. In his second main phase, Zack casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He ends the turn. Dan draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He taps his Talisman to help cast his commander, Ishai, Ujitai Dragon Speaker. He passes. Nate draws and casts a Mana Crypt. Ishai and Esper Sentinel trigger. Zack draws and Ishai gets a counter. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Fairy Seer. Zack declares no blocks and, in response, Nate ninjutsus in Mist Syndicate Naga, bouncing Fairy Seer to his hand. Zack takes it, Naga triggers, creating a copy of itself. In his second main phase, he plays a Shizo, Death's Storehouse. He ends the turn. During his draw step, Paul takes a damage from his Mana Vault. He plays a Mana Confluence. He casts his foretold card, Mystic Reflection, targeting Esper Sentinel. Ishai and Esper trigger. Zack draws and Ishai gets a counter. He activates Tevish's first ability to create two Thralls, but they become copies of Esper Sentinel instead through Mystic Reflection. Next, he taps his Mana Confluence to help cast Wheel of Fortune. In response, Zack casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Both of Paul's Sentinels trigger and Ishai triggers as well. Paul draws twice and then Ishai gets a counter. Zack mills through Brain Freeze, including an Underworld Breach, and then Wheel of Fortune resolves. Each player discards their hand, including Zack, who discards Savine's Reclamation, and then draws seven. All finished up, Paul passes. Zack draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He casts a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. Zack ends his turn. Dan draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mox Opal. All three Espers trigger. Dan taps his Ancient Tomb to pay for one of Paul's, and then Paul and Zack draw a card. He casts a Felwar Stone. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Paul. He adds eight red and then exiles Bergy, God of Storytelling, Time Twister, and Silence. 
He casts Azoria's Signet. He casts Bergy, God of Storytelling. He casts Silence, and then everyone braces for impact. Bergy triggers, and in response, Nate casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, Pain of Life, and exiling a blue card targeting Silence. All three espers trigger. Zack and Paul draw, and then Silence is countered, and then Dan follows it up with a Time Twister. Bergy triggers, and in response again, Paul casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Time Twister. Eshai and Esper trigger, and then Zack draws, and then Eshai gets a counter. Fierce counters Twister, and then Dan adds a red through Bergy. He casts his other commander, Jessica, Thrice Reborn. Bergy triggers, and he adds a red. He activates Jessica's second ability, where X equals 2, targeting both Miss Syndicate Nagas and Zack's Esper Sentinel, killing them. He recasts his commander, Jessica, Thrice Reborn. He adds a red through Bergy, and it enters with three counters. He activates Jessica's first ability, targeting Eshai. In response, Paul casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Jessica's ability. Eshai triggers and gets a counter. In response, Zack cuts a deal with Dan, saying that he will counter Deflecting Swat if he doesn't hit him with the very large Eshai. Dan agrees, and Zack taps his Mana Confluence to help cast this spell, countering Deflecting Swat. Eshai and both Espers trigger, and Zack pays for one, then Paul draws, and then Eshai gets a counter. Then Jessica's ability resolves. He moves to combat and swings Eshai at Paul. Paul takes triple damage because of Jessica and dies to commander damage. All finished up, Dan passes. During his upkeep, Nate loses his mana crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a swamp. He casts Scroll Rack. Eshai triggers and gets a counter. He casts Graft Digger's Cage and Eshai gets another counter. In response to Graft Digger's Cage, Zack casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, Pain of Life, and exiling a blue card, targeting Graft Digger's Cage. Eshai and Dragon's Rage Channeler trigger. In response, Nate casts Mystical Tutor and Eshai gets a counter again. Then, Nate fetches up a Force of Negation onto the top of his library. Finally, Zack surveils Gamble into his graveyard through Channeler. Eshai's ability resolves and then gets a counter. Force of Will resolves, countering Graft Digger's Cage. Next, Nate activates Scroll Rack for two. He exiles two cards from his hand and then puts the top two cards from his library into his hand. He then puts the exiled cards on top. With his hand all set up, he ends his turn. Zack draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He moves to combat and attacks Jessica with Dragon's Rage Channeler. Jessica takes it and dies. In his second main phase, he casts a Brainstorm. Eshai and Channeler trigger. Zack surveils a Morphic Pool into his graveyard and Eshai gets a counter. Then Brainstorm resolves and Zack draws three and puts two cards back on top. He cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dragon's Rage Channeler as an additional cost. He fetches up a card into his hand and then casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Eshai. Eshai gets a counter and then is exiled. Dan gains, like, a lot of life and then Zack ends his turn. Dan draws and plays a Hallowed Fountain into play tapped. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with Bergy. Zack takes it, and in his second main phase, Dan taps his Ancient Tomb to help recast his commander, Ishai, Ujitai Dragon Speaker. He passes. During his upkeep, Nate loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and casts Ornithopter. Ishai triggers and gets a counter. He casts Nashi, Moon Sage's Scion, and Ishai gets another counter. He activates Scroll Rack for one, exiling, drawing, and rearranging. He ends the turn. Zack draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He taps his Mana Confluence to help flash back Savine's Reclamation targeting Underworld Breach and the copy targeting Dragon's Rage Channeler. Eshai triggers and gets a counter. Then Savine's Reclamation resolves, returning Underworld Breach and Dragon's Rage Channeler to the battlefield. He cracks Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding his hand and adding 3 blue. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond and Eshai gets a counter. He cracks it again, adding 3 black. He escapes Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Eshai and Dragon's Rage Channeler trigger. Zack surveils a Tarnished Citadel into his graveyard and Eshai gets a counter. Then Zack mills through Brain Freeze. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond again. Channeler and Eshai trigger. Zack surveils Flooded Strand into his graveyard, and then Eshai gets a counter. He cracks his LED, adding 3 red. He escapes LED once more. Channeler and Eshai trigger. Zack surveils an island into his graveyard, and Eshai gets a counter. He cracks his LED, adding 3 white. He escapes Gamble. Channeler and Eshai trigger. Zack surveils a Dark Ritual into his graveyard, and Eshai gets a counter. Gamble resolves, and Zack fetches up a card into his empty hand and then randomly discards a Silence. The whole table laughs at Zack for casting a gamble with an empty hand. Doesn't he know how that card works? Zack escapes silence. Eshai and Chandler trigger. In response, Dan casts Dramatic Reversal, untapping all of his non-land permanents. Still in response, Dan casts March of Swirling Mist, targeting Chandler, Ornithopter, and Nashi. Then all three get phased out. Zack surveils a Necropotence into his graveyard, and then Eshai gets a counter. Then silence resolves. Zack escapes a Brain Freeze, with all copies targeting himself. Eshai triggers and gets a counter. Brain Freeze resolves, and Zack mills nah, a lot of cards into his graveyard. He escapes Brain Freeze one more time, milling the rest of his library. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks it, adding 3 blue. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. It enters, triggers, and with an empty library, Zack wins the game.
Ladies and gentlemen, what a match. Congrats to Zack on his win. As always, Zack showed just how powerful the waiting game can be in a deck like Blue Farm. Through politics, strong value pieces, and well-timed counterspells, Zack was able to pull out the win in tonight's match. He has shown time and time again just how consistently powerful this deck is with him as a pilot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.